Well, good Beaver Dam. It is Pastor Owen coming to you live here from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And today is Monday, March the 15th, uh, the first full day, I guess, of daylight savings time. And uh, it's always an adjustment, but I, I will enjoy the daylight being here much longer uh, during the evening. It'll be a sign that spring is coming. So anyway, you are joining us for our time of reflections, and this is a time where we gather each day, each weekday morning right here on Facebook uh, to read some scripture together, to pray together, and then uh, to share some reflections upon the scripture. So if you happen to be or throughout the day, drop us a line in the comment box. I see that Flo has jumped down here already this morning. Good morning, Flo. Uh, it's all when you guys leave comments in the comment box. It's a great way that we can stay connected as a Christian community. And I see Karen is is joining us this morning. Well, good morning, Karen. So uh, it is a beautiful sunny day here in Beaver Dam. It's a little cooler than what it was over the weekend, uh, but at least it's not raining yet. Uh, those rains are supposed to come tomorrow, but we'll we'll take them as they come. So anyway, we have been working our way through uh, Psalms and through the Gospel of Matthew. And today we're praying our way through Psalm uh, 31. And verses. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible this morning. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. This is Psalm 31, verses 14 through 20. Let us pray. I trust you, Lord. I affirm you are my God. My future is in your hands. Don't hand me over to my enemies, to all who are out to get me. Shine your face on your servant. Save me by your faithful love. Lord, don't put me to shame because I have cried out to you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in death's domain. Let their lying lips be shut up whenever they speak arrogantly against the righteous with pride and contempt. How great is the goodness that you've reserved for those who honor you that you commit to those who take refuge in you, in the sight of everyone. You hide them in the shelter of your wings, safe from human scheming. You conceal them in a shelter, safe from accusing tongues. So uh, such good words from the psalmist this morning. And we're working our way through the Gospel of Matthew, and uh, we're at chapter 5 today. And we're focusing on uh, verses 13 through 20. Um, if you guys remember, chapter 5 is where we, we see Jesus start his teachings on the Beatitudes and on the law. So uh, let's pick up with uh, verse 13. And this little section is entitled, Salt and Light, and then Jesus and the Law. So let's see what the Gospel writer has for us this morning. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how will it become salty again? It's good for nothing except to be thrown away and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world, a city on top of the hill that can't be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on top of a lampstand and it shines on all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people so that they can see good things you do and praise your Father who is in heaven. Don't even begin to think that I've come to do away with the law of the, and the prophets. I haven't come to do away with them, but to fulfill them. I say to you very seriously that as long as heaven and earth exist, Neither the smallest letter nor the smallest stroke of a pen will be erased from the law until everything there becomes a reality. 
Therefore, whoever ignores one of the least of these commands and teaches others to do the same will be called the lowest in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps these commands and teaches people to keep them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I say to you that unless your righteousness is greater than the righteousness of the legal experts and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, let's uh, let's take a few minutes and let's reflect upon the scriptures uh, in prayer. And as we do that, I invite you to focus on this uh, theme from the Psalms. Shine your face upon me. Shine your face upon me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Shine your face upon me. 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 Amen. Amen. Well, I see that Martha is joining us this morning. And happy birthday, Martha. I hope you're having a blessed birthday and getting ready for some great basketball that will be coming up tail end of this week with the NCAA tournament. All right. Uh, well, we're working our way through our, our Wesley Study Bible. And uh, the notes on this section are uh, just a few. There's not a lot of them. And uh, let's see what we've got this morning. Uh, read in the light of, of the re-giving of the Ten Commandments, Jesus provides a reinterpretation of the law on Mount Sinai. 
Righteousness is a term that is better translated as justice, is one key theme. Six specific areas are addressed. Jesus' teaching is stricter than the law itself. Don't get angry, do not lust, do not make a pledge, do not seek revenge, and do not hate your enemy. His teaching on divorce does not fit the pattern exactly. Divorce is allowable in the case of sexual unfaithfulness. As an exception, as an exception clause unique to Matthew, love your neighbor is a refrain that is repeated two other times. And here Jesus extends love towards enemy. This extension is justified by Jesus' understanding of the completeness of God, which is a characteristic not unique to God, but one that God's followers should emulate. Some, uh, some interesting notes there. All right, yeah. So, you know, Tina and I uh, were started, started to thinking about the summer and we made reservations for our vacation yesterday down at Myrtle Beach. And as I was reading today's text about salt, it reminded me of how the ocean is very salty. And as, uh, as when I was growing up as a kid, we would go to Myrtle Beach for a couple of weeks during the summer. Uh, my grandparents would take us down for one week and then uh, my parents would join us and we'd stay down there usually for a couple of weeks in mid to late August. And, you know, growing up, I spent a lot of time outside and a lot of time going to camp and that kind of thing. And I, by the, by the time August rolled around, my legs and arms were just eaten up with mosquito bites that I had scratched so much that they were actually little open wounds. I was wondering, I was, you know, just what came to mind. Did you guys ever do that when you were growing up? Can you relate to having all of those little bug bites all over you that you would scratch? Well, anyway, I can remember the first few times that I would go into the ocean that those little bites would sting. I mean, they would sting something fierce. But after a couple of weeks playing in the ocean water, those wounds were almost healed. It took some pain before the healing could begin. So I was thinking that if we're supposed to be the salt of the earth, does that mean that by us being followers of Christ, that we might experience some pain before the healing can begin? Perhaps. But I think what the main point for us in the text today is, is to remember that even though the salt may sting, it also heals. So I wonder if, if our actions as Christians might bring some pain to the world, but through that pain, there is great healing, healing that only God can provide. Just some reflections on this beautiful Monday morning. I thought our uh, closing prayer this morning is the colic from the Methodist prayer site. So uh, let us pray. Merciful God, absolve your people from their offenses, that through your bountiful goodness, we may all be delivered from the chains of those sins our frailty we have committed. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Savior, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, friends, I hope you have a beautiful Monday. I hope you enjoy this daylight savings time and that you uh, Find a way to make up for that extra hour of sleep that we missed yesterday morning. Um, but for now, let's, uh, let's get ready to go and take on the day so that we can gather back again tomorrow and take a look at Psalm 32 and Matthew 6. 
But for now, let us remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. And let us... Bye for now.